Hello, my friends. This is your friendly virologist, the virus whisperer. Coronavirus, as with other viruses, is a fascinating creature. Let's dive deep into the biology of coronavirus. The virus is named after the solar corona because of the similar appearance of the spike proteins in electron microscopy. Let's talk about classification. Coronavirus belongs to the order Nidovirales, family Coronavirinae, and subfamily Coronaviridae. COVID-19, like SARS and MERS, is part of the genera Beta Coronavirus. Why is the order called Nidovirales? Nido comes from the Latin nidus, which means nest. Because these viruses form nested subgenomic RNA from their main genome, which is used to produce proteins that form the new virus. Back to the spike proteins that give it the solar corn appearance, the spikes consist of protein S, which allows attachment to the cellular receptor. For SARS and COVID-19, the cellular receptor is ACE2, or angiotensin converting enzyme 2. Beyond binding to ACE2, a different cellular protease cleaves and primes as protein to enable entry. For COVID-19, this cellular protease is TMPRSS2, or transmembrane protease serine 2. In a recent publication in the journal Cell, a clinically proven serine protease inhibitor, camostat mesylate, was recently shown to inhibit infection of cells with COVID-19 in an in vitro assay. It will be interesting to see if this leads to the development of new antivirals. Let's talk about the insides of coronavirus. Coronavirus has a single-stranded sense RNA genome. Sense means that it is an infectious genome, meaning that the RNA genome alone is sufficient to produce infectious virus particles. Coronavirus genome is about 30,000 nucleotides. This makes it the largest known RNA genome. In comparison, the HIV genome is about 10,000 nucleotides. Coronavirus genome, similar to other viruses, encodes structural and non-structural proteins. To pack as much information into a small virion, Coronavirus uses frame shifting to encode proteins as shown by the boxes that are slightly off leveled in the figure below. Let's talk about replication. We talked about coronavirus having an infectious RNA genome. It makes more copies of its RNA genome using an enzyme called RNA dependent RNA polymerase encoded by protein NSB12. This is fascinating because most organisms we think about in nature have a DNA genome that makes RNA. However, more and more organisms, scientists are finding, have the ability of making RNA from RNA as well. But that is another story. Let's talk about error rates during replication. Viruses with an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase are already prone to high error rates. Coronavirus, because of its large RNA genome, can therefore be even more susceptible to errors. For this reason, it has evolved an exonuclease protein, NSP14, to reduce errors. Exonucleases identify errors and cleave off wrong nucleotides during transcription. This puts coronaviruses at an error rate of 10 to the minus 6, which means one mutation for every million nucleotides. Compare that with the error rate of HIV, which is about 1 in 10,000. Another RNA virus, but with lower fidelity. Let's talk about the life cycle. Coronavirus binds its cellular receptor and enters via endocytosis or fusion. Again, the receptor for COVID-19 coronavirus is ACE2, and entry into the cell requires priming of the S protein 
with the cellular protease TMPRSS2. Once inside, the RNA genome produces genomic and subgenomic copies. Some of these are used as templates to make more proteins, while a full-length genome is made to be packaged into new virions. Coronavirus assembles in the endoplasmic reticulum and sheds from the cell via exocytosis, resulting in new virions. Coronavirus has many other amazing relatives under the order Nidoviralis. We have already spoken in depth about coronavirus. Torovirus infects vertebrates, especially cattle, pig, and horse, and is named after torus, which refers to its unusual C-shape, unclosed circle. In contrast, ronivirus infects crustaceans such as shrimp. As you can appreciate, there are many coronaviruses and their relatives on the planet that infect many species including bats, camels, dolphins, and even beluga whales. These viruses form phylogenetically distinct clusters and COVID-19 is a part of the beta coronavirus branch. Although viruses sound scary and often get media attention during outbreaks, viruses are not trying to kill us. In fact, most viruses do not cause disease. Instead, they evolve to replicate their genomes and spread like any life on this planet. Interestingly, most illnesses and deaths associated with the virus are often caused by the host immune reaction. I hope you find this video informative and that it helps you appreciate the diversity of life on this planet. Thank you for watching. Take care, my friends. Brought to you by your friendly virologist, the Virus Whisperer.